My name is Clay Dorsky, and today it is my pleasure to present to you on rickets. First, can we take a minute to stretch? Put your shoulders back, twist your spine, and stretch your legs. You don't feel your bones, but they're there, and they're a foundation for a healthy system. Today we will learn about rickets and attack on the skeletal formation. Overview. We will learn about rickets, what rickets is, its causes, and how to find we will then examine the history of, the, of rickets, its discovery, a study of the current understanding of rickets, prevention and treatment, and I will also discuss my personal experience of nutritional rickets as a child, and then the conclusion and any questions. Definition of rickets. Rickets is a preventable, usually easily treatable bone weakening disease that is making a comeback. Rickets is a disease that causes abnormal bone growth deformities of the bone by demineralizing growing bones due to a lack of vitamin D, calcium, and or phosphate. This is also known as osteomalacia. Signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms include bone pain or tenderness, dental deformities, short stature, impaired growth, decreased muscle strength, and a number of skeletal deformities, which include abnormally shaped skull, ribcage abnormalities, bow legs, misshapen breastbone, pelvic and spinal deformities. Diagnosis. A, musculo a musculoskeletal examination will reveal tenderness or pain in the bone itself, rather than in the joints or muscles. Bone x-rays may also show decalcification through changes in the shape or structure of the bones. A bone biopsy is rarely performed, but can confirm rickets. The musculoskeletal exam and x-ray are the most common ways to use, use to diagnose rickets. Three sides of rickets. To understand the prevention and treatment of rickets, think of a three-sided object, such as a triangle. Rickets can, ca can be caused by a deficiency in vitamin D, calcium, and or phosphate. The causes of each of these deficiencies can be different, but the result is the same. Anything that blocks the absorption of vitamin D, calcium, and or phosphate can lead to rickets, whether through failure to consume good nutrition or the inability to process vitamin D, calcium, and or phosphate. Prevention. To prevent rickets, it requires maternal help, making sure pregnant moms are taking vitamins so they are passing sufficient nutritional stores to the fetus. Once a child is born, blood, test blood testing, prescribing vitamin supplements, and checking for a response in vitamin D, calcium, or phosphate levels. Treatment. The goals of treatment are to understand the causes of rickets, to treat those causes, and to monitor the child's health to prevent recurrence. Surgery may be required in extreme cases of deformity. Vitamin D metabolism. All living things create vitamin D from being in the sun, being exposed to sunlight. Humans create most of their vitamin D through UV light on our skin. We also take in vitamin D by eating vitamin D rich animals such as salmon, herring, or mackerel fish, taking fish oil supplements, eggs, supplemented milk, and other vitamin supplements. These are diagnosed, digested, and traveled through the, into the lower intestine where they are converted into liver calcidiol. Enzymes in the kidney convert calcidiol to 1,25-OH2-D3 or calcitriol. In vitamin D's active form, it acts as a hormone to regulate calcium absorption from the intestine and to regulate calcium levels of calcium and phosphate in the bones. Because vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, conditions that reduce digestion or absorption of fats will decrease the ability of vitamin D to be absorbed by the intestines. Types of rickets. When there is a loss of calcium and phosphate from the bones, especially from the fast-growing bones of a small child, this causes bone deformities and demineralization. Prevention of this requires vitamin D supplements and adjustment of calcium and phosphate levels as necessary. Nutritional rickets. Nutritional rickets is, an easily, remedied, is easily remedied by introducing vitamin D supplements and then checking the levels of calcium and phosphate to make sure there are no underlying causes. Vitamin D dependent rickets type 1 and type 2. There's also two 
Uh, there's also vitamin D-dependent rickets, type 1, from defective gene coding. And then there is vitamin D-dependent rickets, type 2. This results from defective vitamin D receptors. Vitamin D-resistant rickets. There are two types of vit vitamin D-resistant types of rickets, familial hypophosphatemic rickets and hereditary hypophosphatemic rickets with cal uh, hypercalciuria. Rickets can also be brought on by kidney disease, medication, or malabsorption syndromes, such as inflammatory bowel syndrome. Other types of rickets. Hereditary rickets is an inherited form of the rickets of the disease when the kidneys are unable to retain phosphate. Rickets can also be caused by kidney disorders involving renal tubular acidosis, also known as RTA. RTA is a condition characterized by too much acid in the body due to a defect in the kidney function. History. The word rickets comes from the Old English word ricken, meaning twisted or curved. The character of Tiny Tim from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is thought to have been disabled by rickets and to represent the many victims of child labor in the factories of the Industrial Revolution at the turn of the 19th century. Rickets was discovered in the 2nd century AD by Serranus, a Greek physician, and he was the first person to describe bone deformities. He noticed the bone deformities were more apparent in young children whose mothers lacked whose mother lack nurture and hygiene. Rickets was described in 1645 by the English physician Daniel Whistler, who published Inaugural Medical, which provided a description of the signs and symptoms of rickets. In 1650, the English physician Francis Gleason published the De Rachitis on rickets. At the turn of the 20th century, during the Industrial Revolution, when ch child labor in factories was common, rickets was associated with poor children living in industrial cities of the United States and several polluted cities throughout Europe. By the 1930s, both US and British governments recognized the role of sunlight and vitamin D in preventing rickets and mandated that vitamin D be added to milk, bread, and other products. Rickets today. How can something so easy to diagnose, inexpensive to cure, and thought to have been cured long ago, how can we be experiencing an epidemic outbreak of it now, both in developing countries as well as in the US and Britain? The CDC estimates that five of every one million U.S. child between, aged between six months and five years have rickets. During the 1990s, that number increased to nine of every one million child being hospitalized for rickets. We have no verifiable way of knowing the number of cases of rickets because there is no effort at surveillance. A recent study by Britain's National Health Service found that ten times the number of cases have been reported in the last year. Who or what is at fault? Recent news reports blame those physicians who are reluctant to encourage vitamin supplements for fear of offending breastfeeding mothers, overuse of sunscreen, junk food, unfortified non-dairy drinks such as rice or almond milk, a vegan diet, wearing the burqa, and even extreme video gaming as the cause of new outbreaks of rickets. Experiment. An example of a study is the Sahay brothers Survey, which uh, study, which surveyed the pres presence of rickets in underdeveloped tropical countries in 2013. They discussed the problems of vitamin D and calcium deficient diets as causes of rickets and issues with, vi with calcium, vitamin D, and phosphate absorption, as well as kidney defects, tumor induced osteomalacia, dense disease, and hypophosphatemic rickets. Conclusion from the experiment. They concluded that the majority of the cases are due to poor nutrition and respond well to high doses of vitamin D supplements. Personal story. My very earliest memory is bone pain in my legs. I was born in an orphanage in Kazakhstan, and due to poor nutrition and poverty there, I had an extreme case of nutritional rickets. I am grateful to my parents and to Senator Barbara Boxer and Diane Feinstein who got me my visa so I could become the US, a US citizen and um, have medical treatment. The orphanage director in Kazakhstan told my parents, this kid will probably never be able to walk, never be able to stand. Therapy for rickets. Well, I stand here today, grateful to be able to stand and walk and to present to you. It took a few years with a special diet and a lot of physical therapy to get my legs back. My pediatrician told my mom that it, I would need to do physical therapy. 
So I had to do swimming and gymnastics to re in order to regrow the muscles in my legs and strengthen my bones. Doctors kept track of my vitamin D, and calcium, and phosphate levels, and I continued to, um, doing the sports to build up my legs. I learned to love the discipline of sports, and I became an athlete. I am thankful to God, to all my family, all the PTs, my coaches, my teammates, who helped me build back my legs, but also build my character, and to become the person who is able to walk and run, and who is so grateful to present to you today. It is my goal now to work in the science and medicine to improve the health of others, and gratitude for what was done for me. In conclusion, rickets is caused by the deficiency of vitamin D, calcium, and or phosphate, resulting in the demineralization of deformed skeletal structure. Thank you. I will now open the floor to any questions or comments. All right, if you have a question, Claire, is there a question? What is muscle biopsy? It's a type of um, diagnosis that they can do to see if it gets, if you have rickets. Under? It's a tradi It's a traditional um, head covering. Okay. How many years do you have with it? Um, I would say one or two years. <laughs> one or two years, no, I was adopted at six months, so.